check out this week's Stay Current short. Now switching gears to the hamartomatous polyposis syndromes. The most common is juvenile polyposis syndrome, which affects one in 100,000 live births, and it's related to yet another genetic mutation, this time in SMAD4. There are about 20% of patients who have a SMAD4 mutation. Um, also 20% have BRMP1A. But the SMAD4 mutation I'll talk about a little bit later because that's also associated, associated with um, hereditary uh, hemorrhagic telangiectasia. We've been seeing this in a lot of our patients with SMAD4 mutations is that they have a lot more increased in, um, mucosal inflammation. Um, oftentimes when we scope these kids that have JPS and HHT, it'll actually look like IBD. Um, and so, uh, and it's thought that this is uh, happening because there's change in the regulation of TGF beta based on this bad form mutation. That's Dr. Joseph Palermo. He's a pediatric gastroenterologist and a member of the multidisciplinary polyposis team at Cincinnati Children's Hospital. Once we send a biopsy of suspected juvenile polyposis, what is the pathologist looking for? If you look at it under a microscope, again, what you see is that you see these large uh, dilated cystic dilation of their glands lined by cuboidal epithelium. There's lots of uh, uh, irritation, inflammation, um, hemorrhage uh, in these polyps, but there's no large blood vessels running here through the through the stalk. About 95% of single polyps in children are juvenile polyps, and usually they're on the left side. Screening is indicated when there's more than three to five polyps or multiple polyps over multiple scopes. It's also known that if you, with JPS, if you have an earlier presentation in infancy or childhood, it's more severe, meaning your polyp burden is higher, um, you're more likely to have problems with uh, anemia uh, just because of the number and size of the polyps that develop. Officially, screening starts at 15 years old, but the first colonoscopy is recommended at the first presentation of symptoms. And so again, we do upper endoscopy, colonoscopy, and in this case, we also do a capsule endoscopy at least once um, as a baseline um, early on to see if there are any um, uh, polyps in the small intestine mainly because you know most kids are going to have at some point in time in their life belly pain and knowing what they already have in there is going to be helpful because if they have polyps in there that are um, even if they're small if we know they're already in there and growing and they start having belly pain um, we you know those are the kids that we would probably um, be more um, aggressive with with imaging as well as um, doing other things like uh, push enteroscopy to try and get to the polyps. Cancer isn't usually detected until adulthood and therefore surgical resection is only indicated if symptomatic, not for prophylaxis. Otherwise, endoscopy is the main state of management, both for screening and polypectomy. Our follow-up uh, for GI polyps, uh, again, is annual screenings. Um, if you identify a polyp, and then if you, there's no polyps on the initial screening, you can space it out to every two to three years. Check out the full episode on YouTube, the Stay Current app, or SoundCloud. Find the links below.